The BBC Micro had excellent floppy disk support, but the standard disk system was designed for use with single density disks uh, with a very limited capacity, and so its limitation of 31 files per side of a disk wasn't too much of a problem. However, people wanted more space on disks, and so different disk controllers were developed that could handle double density disks, uh, which could store more data. But that meant that only 31 files per disk started to become a bit of a problem. Here's one solution to that, which I don't think there are very many of left. The Opus DDoS system, which uses a different disk controller and a different filing system to get more files onto a disk. First, the hardware. Inside this BBC Micro, if I take the lid off, you can see there's an extra circuit board in here. That fits into the slot where the 8271 disk controller would normally be, but it has an 8272 disk controller and a bunch of other logic. Um, and that needs different software to run it than the standard Acorn DFS. Now let's take a look at the software. Um, I've already got a disk in the drive here. So let's first of all let's see what commands are available. If I use star help, we can see that the DDoS provides DDoS and utils help features. Let's start with utils because it's shorter. Notice in addition to the usual DFS ones, there's also a format command and a volgen command. Uh, which we'll come to later. There's also a verify command for verifying disk formatting. Looking at the DDoS help, we've got commands for automatically switching between 40 and 80 track disks in software. Uh, we have also mcopy, which is a sort of enhanced copy command, which copies multiple files into memory at the same time to make it faster. SROM for selecting which ROM to save if you want to save your sideways ROMs disk. Uh, STAT for seeing what the status of a disk is and how it's partitioned. And uh, tape disk for transferring things from tape to disk. And XCAT for doing an extended catalogue of a disk. Uh, since I've got a disk in the drive, we'll start by trying to format it. So if I type star format, oh, that won't work because I mistyped it. If I type it properly, uh, it comes into a nice yellow screen. Number of tracks, uh, this is an 80 track disk, so we'll go for that. Drive number, let's start with zero. Uh, and let's format it double density. Now you couldn't do this with a standard Acorn disk interface because the controller, the 8271, only supported single density. So, this will now format the disk. I think if anything goes wrong, it would show errors next to the numbers scrolling down the screen here. Acorn themselves solved the double density problem later on with the 1770 disk controller, which was used by almost everybody. But this was an early attempt by an independent uh, company to introduce double density disks. And the controller they chose, the 8272, wasn't compatible with anything else ever used in the Acorn world. Computer users of a certain age will remember the hours and hours spent waiting for this formatting process to complete. But we're nearly there now. So far this looks like a perfectly normal disk format, it's just run through and formatted all 80 tracks. And it will finish now. There we go. Done. Okay. Now the interesting thing now is we have what looks like a perfectly normal disk, if I catalogue it. Uh, but it says double density at the top. And notice this line here. It's got A, B, C, D, E, dot, dot, dot. That's because the DDoS format supports multiple volumes on one drive. Um, if I use that volgen command that we saw earlier on, we can examine what's going on. If I type star volgen, it will read the volume list off the disk, and this is like partitioning of a hard drive. So each of these volumes can hold a blistering 31 files, just like an old-fashioned DFS disk, 
but they can be selected like independent drives. So the standard format produced one, two, three, four, five volumes of various different sizes. So we can use this to delete them and make some new ones. Uh, let's get rid of them. If I go A, B, C, D, E. So we've now got 355k on this side of this disk, which is not bad actually. That's uh, that's 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 a pretty full double density disk and far more than the 200k that Acorn DFS would manage to fit on the same drive. So let's create a new volume, so start with A and let's make it, I don't know, 100k. There we go, it rounds that to the nearest it can manage. I think it may be a whole track or something. Uh, 256 remaining, let's make another one of say 50k and another one the same uh, let's make another 100k one, obviously you'd have to decide what size partitions you wanted and then the last one let's yeah, make it 58 to fill the thing up uh, oh, for some reason we've only got 54 let's see if we can make a really small one no we can't. Anyway, so that's most of the disk uh, partitioned up. So we've got two partitions of 100k, two of 49 and two of 54k. So we'll write that to the disk. And there we are. So now if I do a start stat on this disk we can actually see what the volumes are. And there we go. So we have five different volumes with how much space they've got in them. And um, now we can actually try writing something in them. Let's try using, let's just, I don't know, save the screen into the current one. And that. So that should have used about 1k if I remember rightly. Let's have a look again at star stat. There we go, we've used 1k in the first volume. Now I can select a different one by selecting drive, say, 0d. Now we're using a different volume. So if I save uh, another file, uh, a bigger one this time, should be 16k, saves it. Takes us a moment or two. Writing to double density disks doesn't seem to be very fast. And now, here we are, we've got 1k used on drive 0 and 16k used on drive 0d. So if I look at the disk catalogue now, we're on drive 0d, remember? And there we are, there's our file. If I change back to drive zero, there's our original screen file. So we've actually got five independent partitions on this one floppy disk. Um, just to show you one of the other features of this DDoS, uh, the ROM saving one, which is quite handy. If I go and select ROM F, I'm not sure what is in ROM slot F on this machine, and then I save it. Let's just save the first bit because it's quicker. Um, ROM F from 8000 to, let's say, the first 1K, 8400. And now if I select ROM E, save ROM E, 8400. Um, now we can have a look at what's in those files and see what we've saved. Notice they were both from the same area of memory. So let's look at ROM F first. And you can see this is the basic ROM, basic 1. Now if we have a look at ROM E, it's word-wise. So we've managed to select two different ROMs to be able to save them to disk. That's very handy if you're using a machine with sideways RAM or you want to save your ROM images to use somewhere else. Uh, now we've got quite a few files in this partition. We've got three files. Uh, let's say we wanted to copy those to another volume. We can now use star m copy from... Let's check how it works. 
So we can copy multiple files from uh, the source drive to the destination drive. So we go start and copy from naught to say naught C and it will read those three files and then write them into volume 0 C. So we're in volume 0, if I go star drive 0 C and look at it. That's not now got our three files in. And look at star stat to see what's going on in all the volumes. We have now 3K used in drive 0, 3K used in drive C, and our 16K used in drive D. So that's how the Opus DDoS works, a peculiar way of squeezing more data and more catalogue entries into a BBC Micro disk, whilst retaining some amount of compatibility with how DFS used to do things.